I've been across the United States of America and up to Dead Horse, Alaska. I've been across the country five times, and this was supposed to be just another trip. You, know, you get to a point where you promise friends you would meet them. You promise you would ride with them. You start getting older. Friends start getting sick. You wonder how much more time do you have left to actually go do the things that you promised you would do. So the thought was, I'll just do a quick little trip across the country, not even all the way to the coast. I'll go visit my buddy Bruce out in New Mexico. We'll ride around, and maybe I'll finish the trip up to Badlands National Monument that I had started the previous year, but my bike had broken. So um, I made the announcement that I was going to do this little trip, and uh, my buddy John St. John said, well, maybe I could join you. I've never been across the country. Would you let me tag along? Cool. Let's make this a trip together. So we're able to do a trip that I've done many times, but now see the same old trip through new eyes. Little did I know what I was in for. So Colin Bush, who th did a trip to Ushuaia, and I are in agreement on how you travel, because I hate reservations. I will ride until I don't want to ride anymore, and then I'll find a place to stay. I hold on to my plans very, very loosely. I don't like to, if I make a reservation somewhere, all of my future options have been eliminated and I'm stuck with that reservation. So if anything interesting along the way happens, I'm screwed because I gotta make that reservation. So I like to travel kind of in an ad hoc nature. You ride along, you meet people. And every trip I've ever been on has had a theme. And the theme kind of develops as you're riding. And we met this guy along the way, uh, a guy by the name of Bob Seal, who just has, um, has this kind of infectiously positive attitude, despite the fact that he's overcome unbelievable challenges. And so he's got this tattoo, which kind of became the theme for our trip, which is just trust the journey. The idea being, it's not about the destination. We're motorcyclists, after all. It's not about the destination. It's about what happens on the road as you're traveling. And then as you go along, you'll end up meeting people. There's something about being a motorcyclist, being visible on the bike, that makes people approach you, especially if they're riding. And it's such a common thing to be out in the middle of nowhere, and all of a sudden you meet a couple of motorcyclists, and then you've got traveling companions for a day, a week, a month. Not that that's ever happened. Um, interestingly enough, in Springerville, Arizona, we met this couple. And uh, they were <laughs> travelers like we were, just riding around. We rode Route 191 down through Arizona with them, which started out as a simple breakfast, ended up in a, to a day-long trip. And uh, Debbie said something really interesting. She says she's traveled across the country by herself, does so regularly, her friend was concerned about this because, of course, we know it's very dangerous for a woman to travel by herself. But she said, you know, there's something about motorcycle people. There's something about it that transcends barriers, that brings us together in a way that other groups just don't experience. And if you've ridden a motorcycle long enough, you'll, you'll experience this. It happens. But not always. You know, sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes you get scared. Sometimes you meet people that they themselves are perfectly fine. They're nice, they're kind, they're open. But they come from a background or are connected to a background with lots of problems. Unsavory people. I uh, helped a guy change a tire once and um, found out two days later that he was in the hospital with a broken arm. He had been out with some of his friends and they were wearing vests for his motorcycle club. Another motorcycle club came along and beat them to a point where he was hospitalized and couldn't ride for a few months. I've certainly met riders out there who told me stories of problems that they've run into, stopping for the wrong person on the side of the road. So while we like to think it's important to be open, there are always 
possibilities for things to go horribly, horribly wrong. And that's one of the risks that we take. But then again, we're motorcyclists, so we're all about taking a calculated risk because we value the benefit of that risk versus the downside. So I parted company with my traveling companions, and I decided to head home. I'd been out there for a while, and like I said, it was a trip like any other trip. I was staying off the interstate, I was on Route 400 heading across Kansas, doing what they call the Kansas lean into the consistent wind, filled with dust and tumbleweeds, unbelievable tumbleweeds, on the left-hand side of the road, sometimes four feet deep. And you're riding along, and I have this rule, every 90 miles, I stop. I take a break, because after about 110 miles sitting in the seat, I hurt, and then if I do that once, I'm screwed for the rest of the day. However, I decided for whatever reason, I was feeling pretty good, the sun was going down, I was gonna do another 200 miles, because I wanted to get home. I was feeling the pressure, I'd been on the road longer than I said I was going to be. And uh, so I rode through. Rode to the end of that tank of gas, came into this little town, I don't even remember what it was called, and uh, rolled into the gas station. The pump was broken. So I rolled around to a functioning pump. Oops, went nice. Come on, back up. When I saw this, And I looked at that bike, and I thought, that, that looks odd. That looks like an old Indian to me with a new motor in it. You know, it's got dirt on it, and, but that's pretty cool. So thinking of my buddy Duncan would really like that bike, I said to the guy, can I take a quick picture? Oh, plenty of seats up here. Can I take a quick photo? He says, sure, you can take a photo. So I snapped a shot, and um, they start talking to me. So where have you been? I was out in New Mexico, I'm riding through Arizona. Where are you headed? Well, I'm heading back home to Maryland. I figure I'll be there tomorrow. I'm going to do another couple hundred miles. And uh, I'm looking at this guy, because he's reminding me of some of the people that, uh, well, that told me stories. And uh, the Indian rider says, well, a bunch of bikers and us are meeting at a hotel for dinner and drinks in Dodge City. You should join us. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm by myself. I've got this idea that I'm going to go home. And these two guys just invited me for dinner and drinks with a bunch of bikers at a hotel in Dodge City. What would you do? Thinking about reservations, thinking about I need to get home, thinking about... And I guess... The Indian rider, he's, he was perceptive, because he saw my hesitation. And he said, oh, no, 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 they're, they're, they're not bikers like us. They're, they're like you, BMW riders and uh, adventure guys. And like, oh, yeah? Cool. I'm in. So um, we gas up. The Indian rider gets on his bike. I get on mine. Harley rider. We leave the parking lot together. And as if we had been riding together for a lifetime, Instantly, discipline, staggered formation, no hooliganism, the 16 miles click off, and we roll up to the hotel, and no lie, the parking lot was filled with BMWs and adventure bikes, and a Ducati, and a KTM, and a Triumph, and, you know, and there are a bunch of guys, all older than me, futzing with their bikes. Well, okay, that's pretty cool. I, this, this might be okay after all. So um, I go into the hotel, and the Indian rider comes with me. He says, by the way, my name's Robert. Okay, cool, Robert. My name's Yermo. And um, he says, well, you should probably get a room, because you know, if we're going to be drinking, you don't want to ride. Okay, cool. Uh, walk up to the counter, and there were a lot of people there. So I said, well, you know, it doesn't look like they've got any vacancies. He says, oh, don't worry about that. If there are no vacancies available, you can have my room. I'll bunk with one of these other guys. Okay. It's awfully nice of you. So walk up to the counter, and there's a nice young lady. Says, oh, no, we have one room left. Okay, cool. Are you, and she asks, are you part of the riders group? I said, and before I could say no, Robert says, yes, he's one of us. Okay, so for a ridiculously cheap, I forget what it was, like 50 bucks, I got a room. Went upstairs, deposited my gear, came back downstairs, 
into the saloon where they were having dinner and drinks. And this is what I encountered. And I was, uh, you know, 30 minutes ago, I'd been on my way home. Now I'm walking into a saloon to sit down and have dinner and drinks with a bunch of guys that I have no idea who they are, where they're from. I feel terribly out of place. I sit down, they're, they've clearly known each other for a long time, and I am completely the odd man out, so I kind of sheepishly sit there and just listen, and, you know, they're talking, this guy, Bill, is talking about a Frank Lloyd Wright house, and they're all speaking in complete sentences. <laughs> so they're clearly, you know, and there's talk about business, and there's talk about adventures, and I'm thinking, okay, these, these really are not what you would think of as bikers. Even, even the Harley guy and the Indian guy. But again, I had nothing to contribute, so I just sheepishly sat there and there was a lull in the conversation and so I figured, let me try to say something. So I say to Robert, hey Robert, what, what's up with that Indian? You know, because it looks like an old Indian with a, with a new frame, with a new motor in it. And he says, no, it's a, it's a 2014 pre-production model. It'll uh, get destroyed at the end of this trip. How is it that you scored a pre-production 2014 model from Indian Motorcycle Corporation? And completely nonchalantly says, oh, I'm the PR manager for Indian Motorcycle Corporation. And I'm like, the guy sitting next to you? His name's Barry Hathaway. He's the photographer and journalist from Cycle World magazine that has the exclusive coverage on our ride. The guy next to him, his name is Ken Freund. He writes for Roadrunner Magazine and Motorcycle Consumer News. That's Chris Carter. He's, um, oh God, I forget what the acronym is, but there's that six-day enduro race in Europe that uh, was featured in On Any Sunday. ISDT. Yes, he's a, gold, he's a gold medalist from that competition, and he owns this little company called Motion Pro. Mucho Bill, because he's too much, owns a, uh, a limousine service. And then there's Andy Aaron, who owns a company called Cycle Visions. They do all kinds of custom Harley work. So I'm just sitting there, what have I stumbled into? <laughs> you know, so I talked to Ken about the publishing industry and decreasing rates on uh, the written word. I talked to Barry about writing for magazines, and I listened. And I figured, okay, I'm going to go back to my room, I'll get up tomorrow sometime, I'll head back home. It's the end of the evening, we're calling it quits, I get up to leave, and Ken, the Roadrunner magazine guy, says, so you're Mo, are you joining us tomorrow? <laughs> what? Um, yeah, we're just going to go 300 miles, you're heading east, we're heading east. Why don't you join us? And the other guy's like, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll join you. We're heading east anyway. So, but, he says, you got to be downstairs at 6.30 a.m. And anybody knows me knows that that just ain't happening. 